On this particular day, Chip happened to spot a used houseboat for sale. We'd been living in a house that we were getting ready to flip, and we'd just started renovating our farmhouse outside of Waco, Texas, which meant we were on the hunt for a temporary place to live. So Chip clicked through the pictures of that floating two-story shanty with its microscopic kitchen and had a full-blown Chip Gaines epiphany. You know, I really thought to myself, how cool is this going to be? Move the entire family onto this houseboat. We'll put it down here on one of these lakes. I'll get the kids to fish for breakfast off of the balcony. Joe is going to love this. So he bought it, sight unseen. We just barely had our heads above water at that point, and he went and threw tens of thousands of dollars down on that thing. And then he didn't say a word. He had it shipped to Waco on a monster tractor trailer and couldn't wait to show off the surprise when it finally arrived. After all our years of marriage, he was still clueless about how I might react. I had no idea any of this was going on, of course. But right around that same time, on some random weeknight, I received a phone call from an out-of-state number I didn't recognize. I picked it up. Hi, I'm Katie Neff, and I work for a television production company, the woman on the line said. I saw some of your designs online, and I was wondering... This Katie had apparently seen photos of our most recent flip house that I'd designed, the one we were living in at the time. A few weeks earlier, a friend of mine, Molly, had submitted these photos to a popular blog called designmom.com, and I'd been excited that a blog with thousands of followers wanted to feature it. It was the first time my work had ever really been featured on a design blog other than my own. I had a loyal local following back then, but no national following to speak of. I love what you did, Katie continued. So I looked you up and read your blog, too. I see that you and your husband work together, and I was just wondering, would you ever want to be on a TV show? I sat there and thought, did I just hear that right? What about us would you want to show on TV, I asked. Well, we just love how organic it is that you and your husband work together. Not only do you sell homes, but you also flip and renovate them. We think it's unique, and you're a husband and wife team. She went on and on, and I finally said, well, let me talk to Chip, and I'll get back with you. I got with Chip, and he immediately said, that's a scam, JoJo. Don't call them back. Yeah, I'll admit I was skeptical. You know, back in high school, I had these buddies who were always trying to get into modeling. Seems like they'd end up with an agent, some sort of a casting call. They'd wind up paying some guy thousands of dollars to get these headshots, and nothing would ever come of it. So yeah, I thought it was something like that. Joe really thought she was going to give this a shot. So I was like, Joe, I'm telling you, there's no way this is legit. We're going to meet these people. They're going to get us all excited, thinking we're going to be famous or something like that. And then they're going to say, oh, and by the way, uh, you owe us $20,000. I somehow convinced Chip to let me call Katie back. We didn't have a lot of money and just lying around, so I knew there was no way anyone could trick us out of thousands of dollars. Of course, I knew nothing about that houseboat yet. Sure enough, Within a couple of weeks, Katie sent an entire camera crew to Waco to spend five days filming us for what they called a sizzle reel, basically an extended commercial they would put together to try to sell a television series based on the two of us and our little business. They never asked us for any money at all. They were legit, which made us wonder, why in the world would anyone care to watch us on TV? We don't even watch TV. These people have to be nuts. After the crew spent a couple of days with us, they started thinking they may be nuts too. Chip and I were horrible. We were scared of the cameras, which is hilarious because Chip is the most talkative guy I know. But like clockwork, the moment that red light turned on, he froze. My mouth was dry. I couldn't even think straight. Joe was her normal, slightly dull self. They just followed Joe around and tried to make something out of nothing. It was pretty obvious this could not make good television. We were awful. It just, we were awful. The crew had me stand in my kitchen and try to make pancakes with the kids hanging off my legs while Chip was basically sucking his thumb over in the corner. And the whole time I was trying to convince the kids not to look into the camera so it would look more natural. It certainly didn't feel natural and it definitely wasn't any fun. On the fourth day, just before the camera crew was scheduled to go home, their top guy pulled us aside and said, look, if something doesn't happen here, there's no way you guys are getting a show. This just isn't working. We figured we were pretty much done at that point, and it didn't really bother us at all. The two of us had never imagined we'd be on TV. We talked to friends about the kinds of things they watched on reality TV, and from what we could tell, none of it seemed like us anyway. Then something happened. The very next morning, the houseboat arrived. With cameras rolling, Chip put a blindfold on me and drove me to an empty lot by the lake. With all cameras on me, Chip released the blindfold and said, Ta-da! 
I wasn't sure what I was looking at. A shipwreck, maybe? On the back of a semi? What is that? I said. I got this for you, Joe, Chip replied. That better not be for me, I said. It was the ugliest, run-down looking, two-story shack of a boat I'd ever seen. What the heck are we going to do with this houseboat? That's our new home, Chip said, beaming with pride at his purchase. What? You are crazy. We are not living on a houseboat. It quickly dawned on me that this wasn't a joke, and Chip wasn't even close to kidding. I wasn't mishearing him. He was dead serious about making that boat our home for the next six months. I just about lost it. How can we live on the water, Chip? Three of our kids don't even know how to swim. Did you think this through? Then he fessed up and told me how much money he'd spent on it. As it all sank in, I realized I'd never been so mad at him. Ever. And that's saying something. Come on, at least come look at it. I know this can work, he pleaded. As soon as we walked a little closer, we could see the holes. Holes. In the boat. We pulled ourselves up on the flatbed and went inside to find the interior covered in mold. Someone had taken the AC unit out on top and left a gaping hole in the roof. So for years, it had rained straight into the boat. We tried turning the engine over, and of course, it didn't start. That's when Chip got angry. I think I got scammed, he said. Chip, did you even look at this thing before you bought it? Well, no, he said. It was a great deal, and there were all kinds of pictures. It looked like it was in great shape. Oh, wait a minute. I bet the guy just put up pictures of this thing from when he bought it, like in 1980 or something. That sorry sucker. Sorry sucker, Chip? By this point, I'm trying to decide if we could scrap it for parts. My husband had made plenty of impulsive purchases. That's just what he does. He'd gone and purchased the house we were currently in without showing that to me either. But at least it was a house with a roof on a foundation. I'd gone along with it, as I always do, and over time I'd come to love that quirky shoebox of a house. We had worked hard to make it our home. In fact, that house is where I'd had my epiphany about truly owning the space you're in, a moment I'll share with you later, and where I'd designed the kids' rooms that landed on the blog and caused the producer to call. I was already pretty upset that we were going to have to leave the house behind in a few months, but to think that we might have to move into this thing was just too much. You need to return it, I said. It's paid for, Chip said. It's done. I bought it as is. Excuse me, semi-driver, I yelled at the man in the front seat. I need you to hook that thing back up and take it back where it came from. Chip made it clear to me that once he made a deal, fair or not, that thing was ours now. By that point, the cameras had totally disappeared to both of us. We just completely forgot they were there. Chip's arms were flailing around as he circled the boat, tallying up the problems he could find. My arms were flailing as I yelled at him for buying that dumb thing without talking to me first. When I finally calmed down, I saw how disappointed he was and how bad he felt. I decided to take a deep breath and try to think this thing through. Maybe it's not that bad, I said. I think I was trying to cheer myself up as much as I was trying to console Chip. If we fix up the interior and just get it to the point where we can get it onto the water, at least maybe then we can turn around, sell it, and get our money back. Over the course of the next hour or so, I really started to come around. I took another walk through the boat and started to picture how we can make it livable, maybe even kind of cool. After all, we'd conquered worse. We tore a few things apart right then and there, and I grabbed some paper and sketched out a new layout for the tiny kitchen. I talked to him about potentially finishing an accent wall with shiplap, a kind of rough textured pine paneling that fans of our show now know all too well. Shiplap? Chip laughed. That seems a little ironic to use on a ship, doesn't it? Ha ha, I replied. I was still not in the mood for his jokes, but this is how Chip backs me off the ledge with his humor. Then I asked him to help me lift something on the deck, and he said, Aye, aye, matey, in his best pirate voice, and slowly but surely, I came around. I can't believe I'm saying this, but by the end of that afternoon, I was actually a little bit excited about taking on such a big challenge. Chip was still deflated that he'd allowed himself to get duped, but he put his arm around me as we started walking back to the truck. I put my head on his shoulder, and the cameras captured the whole thing. Just an average roller coaster afternoon in the lives of Chip and Joanna Gaines. The head cameraman came jogging over to us before we drove away. Chip rolled down his window, and he said sarcastically, How's that for reality TV? We were both feeling embarrassed that this is how we had spent our last day of trying to get this stinking television show. 
Well, the guy said, breaking into a great big smile. If I do my job, you two just landed yourself a reality television show. What? We were floored. We couldn't believe it. How was that a show? But lo and behold, he was right. That rotten houseboat turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Over the course of the next five months, the production company's head of development, Patrick Jager, championed our show tirelessly until HGTV decided we were just what they wanted. Apparently, one of the big selling points was the authenticity we'd shown during that humbling afternoon. We couldn't have scripted it even if we tried. There was something about Chip's impulsiveness, his riskiness, combined with my reaction to his riskiness, and the way we worked it out as a couple that landed us the show. A few months later, the cameras were back, and Fixer Upper was born. Our quiet little lives turned completely upside down as our life's work became a hit TV show. After years of toiling away, semi-anonymously here in Waco, trying to make ends meet while designing our clients' dream homes and doing our best to raise our four kids right, our world changed in a way that was much different than either of us could have ever imagined. 